In this video, we're going to discuss some basic features inside the Mitel MyCollab client. So in a previous video, I went ahead and explained how to install the client uh, and how to log in the first time. So once that is completed, then this would be a good place to start uh, with your next uh, training exercise as far as figuring out uh, different features and functionality of the MyCollab client. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, launch the client on my desktop. Once you've installed it, you should have an icon that looks uh, just like this. Uh, my Mytel UCA My Collab Client 6.0 is the current version. So I'm going to double click on that to launch the client. We'll wait for that to get connected into the server. And you'll know it's connected when these items up here green up at the top. So now there's uh, several pieces of this client and we're going to kind of go through a few of the basic things in this video. So to start with, we'll start by clicking your name at the top. So if you click your name, you'll see there's several different options here along the side. So we'll go through each one of these in this video and kind of explain to you what they do and what their features and, and, and how they relate to the client. So if we click to the configuration for in, in first. So in, under configuration, we have several different options here. You can change the appearance of how you want the client to work. Um, so when you display contacts in the client, your corporate contacts and the contacts that are in the client when you're looking up people, you can change if you want them to do last name um, and then first name, middle name, or first name, middle name, last name, whatever, right? You can also check box here whether you want it to show the contacts picture or not, and you can also change the language. So um, there's several different languages here. If you want to use a different language for the client, you can do that. The next one is the calendar integration. If you want to integrate your client with your Microsoft um, Outlook calendar, this will actually change the status in your client and allow you to automatically update your statuses in your client based on whether or not you're in a meeting or not. So if you were to enable this functionality here, then you can then ch check and see how you want this to, what, what status you want your client to be in based on whether you're busy or out of the office in your Microsoft. Uh, and this pretty much just integrates with Microsoft uh, Outlook and your calendar and Outlook. So if you click on the configure uh, your calendar, your exchange calendar, this is where you can put in your email address and your login and so forth if you need to log into that calendar, if you don't already have the calendar up and running on your machine. So. And then here's where you pick what status you want it to show based on, um, on how your calendar shows. So you could create a status in there that says in a meeting, and then you can choose that in a meeting or do not disturb when you're in a meeting or when you're busy on your calendar. And then following this, once you're... Um, once your busy once your busy indication in your calendar expires, then you can make the, the status a different status if you'd like to have that a different status. The same thing with whether you're considered out of the office or not on your calendar. So this is the the calendar integration. Uh, you can play with that and see how well that works for you. Call notification. This actually um, outlines how the client is going to react for different call scenarios. So if you receive a call on your desk phone, you can check box here if you want it to show the pop-up window um, and whether you want it to show on an incoming call, um, whether you want it to show up when you dial out, whether you also want to link it to knowledge management, which we'll talk about later in, in a later video, most likely it's a little bit more advanced feature. Um, and then uh, also you can check here if you want to edit the dial out string before you, before you call out and then also, you can, you can check this if you want to display missed calls on your main extension only. So if you have multiple extensions on your phone, like you receive calls on other extensions on your phone, you might not want to show that as your missed calls if it's somebody else's line that's actually ringing on your phone. So then you could checkbox that so that it wouldn't show up those in your missed call in your, your missed call. So then we have uh, the chat settings. So this will show how you want your chat to react. So if you want to show that you're away from your desk after five minutes, or you can change this to whatever option you have available here, two, five, 10, or however long your keyboard is inactive, then it will show away. So this little icon would then turn to a, a, um, a yellow or an orange icon. It's actually yellowish that says that you're away. And other people will, will see that that you're away as well. So 
Then if you want to um, display pop-ups when the chat comes up, which is probably highly recommended so you know that somebody's chatting with you. You can also um, enable a tone if you want it to play the tone in Windows when, when you get the chat. You can also set it up to record your chat history so it records your chat history specifically on your machine. Now the chat history is actually recorded on the server side uh, from a corporate level, but if you wanted to record a separate chat history of all your chats on your own machine, you can checkbox this. Um, you can also enable the emoticons. There's emoticons in the chat, which we'll talk about later. And then um, you can also, whether you want to show your image or not. So, okay. Um, and then also if people are trying to send you files in the chat, then this just tells you where you're gonna, where you're gonna save those files. So the knowledge management, I'm just going to kind of brush on this. We'll, we'll, we can talk about that in, a, in more in depth in a longer in a video later. But uh, basically what knowledge management allows you to do is you can link a knowledge management file with specific contacts. So when somebody calls you, if you're working on a project with somebody, for example, and there's certain documents that you need to open up when, when that person calls you, you can link those documents so that when they call you, it'll actually open the documents on your machine so that that way you're ready to go and start uh, helping the person or or working on the project with them. So, uh, login notification. Um, so this this functionality here allows you to add people for when somebody logs in uh, or they connect to the server. You'll get a notification, a pop up that they've uh, that they've been um, that that they're logged in. And if you have any set up, you'll see them in this window. Um, if there's actually, you would actually set them up, that set that login notification against the actual user in a different place in the in the client, which we can talk about later. PIM integration. This is how to integrate for your um, contacts. If you want to integrate your contacts, um, an external source of contacts into the client, you would configure the PIM integration here. RSS window, if you want an RSS window to display at the bottom of the thing, like stock quotes or something like that, you can click on this. You can put that URL in there and it will display on the bottom of the client and like a ticker tape that'll go by and show you the news or whatever, depending on what you put in this information here. Soft phone settings. If you have a soft phone configured for your, uh, your account, this is where you would go in and, and enable and turn on that soft phone. So we'll talk about that later in soft phone configuration in a video separate for that. Um, USB devices, this is just if you have certain USB devices that you have connected to your machine and you want to map those in here so that you can uh, pull those from the client, you can do that as well. So, And then contacts view, this just shows um, when you double click a contact, how you want it to react. So you want to show contact information, you want to start a chat or you want to start a call with their default phone number. So that's pretty much all of the options in the, in the configuration menu and kind of what they do. So.